So uh, thank you for the organizers for uh, lying for me. I, uh, I'm a urologist and I was having some trouble with my flow in the bathroom. It wasn't really a mic issue. So thank you for that. Now, Ily, thanks for the uh, kind introduction. I just want to add a few more things. I think the last speaker talked about bragging, so just brag a few more things about myself. Is I, I um, essentially really like long walks on the beach. I love anything infused with chocolate. And I am absolutely, absolutely in love with being a doctor. And it wasn't always like that. And I'm so excited today to be able to share with you how because of people just like you that are sitting there in the audience with their phones and on social media, I fell back in love with medicine again. So I feel like there's been a lot of hype here and all the speakers have been making you do things that they specialize in like yoga and laughter yoga and singing and opera. So I feel I should use something that I specialize in and that's urology. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask all the guys in the room to basically stand up. <laughs> oh, women, you really can't do this and if you can then talk to me later. <laughs> but um, you know, I figured what we would do is laughter testicular exams. And I would teach you how to do your self-testicular monthly exam as a urologist. So, dude, put your zipper back on. I'm totally kidding. All right, all right, sit down. <laughs> but, it, 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 you know, it, what's amazing is, you know, as a physician, I, I, I have this... <laughs> dude, stop, man, seriously. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know, as a physician, I have this power to heal, heal patients uh, with my skill set. And as a surgeon, I can do it with surgery, I can do it with medicine. But unfortunately for me, it wasn't always that easy. And I actually really hated, hated my field. And it wasn't until recently, I would say about two years ago, when I started looking at my life in a different perspective, that everything changed. So enough about me. I want to get to know my audience a little bit. So I'm basically going to put up two questions up here on, uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the projection screen here. And I just want you guys to answer it. You can be soft, or if you're really passionate about the answer, then go ahead and scream as loud as you want. So you guys ready? First question, name something you hate. Oh, doctors. But I think I heard mother-in-laws a few times in here too. All right, next question. Name something you love. Whoa, 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 hold on. I, 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 oh. I only heard one voice in the room, and that was my wife, and I think I heard her screaming, shopping. So we'll have to talk about that later. I, do, I am getting all the alerts from American Express Wipe, so uh, uh, I, I know how much you've spent today, so we'll talk about that later. But love is one of those things that you can easily fall into love, and you can easily fall out of love. But to stay in love all the time, what you need is a connection, and whether it's a spiritual connection, an emotional connection, or a physical, connect, physical connection, to stay in love, you have to remain connected. But I personally had a problem with that. And my problem was that I spent 14 years of my life, $400,000 of my parents' money, getting an education in medicine. And the year that I finished my training, I was 32, and I hated being a doctor. It wasn't because I had any complications. I was actually a very good surgeon. I would say I had very good bedside manner. And I would say that you know, I, was, I, I was appropriately dispensing medications. I don't think I was doing anything wrong as a doctor. But deep down inside, I just was not enjoying it. Because I went in to heal patients. And I just didn't find that I was able to do that on the scale that I wanted to. Now, you may be asking, I mean, what's wrong with being a urologist? I mean, you talk about balls all day. And <laughs> you, know, you, you play with these cool instruments. That's what we call a cystoscope, which we put in the bladder. And when we sometimes go inside the bladder, we may see things like this. Um, I had some other pictures, but they kind of told me not to put them up, but I can show you later. But basically things like this where we take, there's bladder stones and then there's a big kidney stone that we've taken out as well. And I have this most amazing partner in crime. And his Twitter handle is actually NutDoc. And he flew in this morning, nutty as he is, to come in for this talk. And I want to thank him. So Joe, thank you for flying in today. But, I have this great opportunity as a surgeon to do some amazing surgeries, help people. I have a great partner in crime. And the best part is I get to dispense some really cool medications. <laughs> I get to give you medication that helps your flow in the bathroom and helps your flow in the bedroom, guys. What is there not to love about being a urologist? 
But the problem was I just felt like I wasn't able to connect with him. And it really came down to me feeling more like a hypocrite rather than a doctor. Because I would be sitting there in my office in front of the patient, and I would be telling my, pa my obese patients, hey man, you have infertility. Your estrogen's a little high. To kind of bring that back down, you really need to lose 20 pounds. You know, you really do. Whereas I was 20 pounds overweight myself. I would be sitting there in the office with my patients that have kidney stones and be telling them, you really need to drink your you increase your water intake to 10 to 12 glasses a day. You need to only take in 2,000 milligrams of salt a day. You need to change all this stuff in your diet. And I was that same doctor at Taco Bell that same day eating, drinking soda and having my weak salt intake in just one session. I was a hypocrite. And what hurt me the most is my patients that had sexual dysfunction. I would be sitting them eye to eye with his wife or his partner next to him and telling him, you really don't need medication. You really just need to communicate what you want with your wife. And I was that guy that had zero communication with my own wife. I was a hypocrite. Why did I even deserve to be a doctor? And it gets you thinking, you know, am I just alone in this? And I'm really not. If you look at statistics, if you look online, if you look at TV, any publications, there's this whole new phrase called physician burnout. You know, 58% of doctors would never do it again. You know, there's going to be a huge national shortage in America of doctors. No one wants to be a doctor. And I was one of them. But then I th took a step back. And what is the real problem? The real problem is not being a doctor or my patients. It's really me. And it's hard to admit to this, but I was depressed. And sometimes it's hard to tell why you're depressed. You know, you don't need one exact reason. But I just wasn't connected to my inner self. So it gets you thinking, like, why did I even do this? And then you realize the problem is not physician burnout. It's not me. It's actually a problem with men overall. Men suck at their health. And I did too. And that's why I just felt really guilty when I was telling guys to take care of themselves when I myself was not taking care of themselves. Now I can sit here all day, tell you about myself and how much I sucked and how much I was overweight, but I'm gonna let statistics, statistics speak for themselves. 24% of men, when they need to go see a doctor, will not go see a doctor. 74% of men in America are overweight or obese. 80% of suicides in America are males. If you look at the top 10 causes of death in America, men, are going to die at a higher ratio of 9 out of 10 of them. Look at this graph. This is the graph that really, really gets me going. Is the life expectancy between a guy, a male, and a female is, five, is a gap of five years. In 1920, the gap was only one year. And now it's five years. And you may think, oh, this is just an American problem. It's a global problem. In the United Kingdom, the gap is four years. So here, men live four years less. In America, they live five years less. In other countries, they may live 10 years less. This is a global problem with men's health. And we need to do something to change that. So what exactly is the solution? Now, I have this beautiful picture here. And I didn't realize the solution was actually right in front of my face. And it happened one night that me and my partner went out to dinner. And we go to a lot of dinner, social events. But this time, my partner actually brought his girlfriend, his new girlfriend, who I had actually never met. And the second I saw her, I, I totally fell in love with her. I mean, my jaw dropped, my mouth started salivating. I wanted to talk to her. I wanted to play with her. <laughs> <laughs> and it, what was cool is that when we were in all these settings, we got guys talking. And so they would come and talk to her. And then they would essentially ask us, like, what are these two doofuses doing with someone like her? And then we would start talking that we're urologists and we're doctors. And then the questions started coming. Oh, crap, you're a, men you're a urologist? Like, what, um, I'm having some trouble down there. Can you t give me some advice? Or, you know, I've had trouble with kidney stones. Is there anything you can do for me? Or I'm having blood pressure issues. Or my, my dad's had a stroke. Is there anything I should be doing differently? And then it's like, holy crap. What she's able to do, we haven't been able to do in our practice, is get guys talking and thinking about their health. And that's when the light bulb went off that we can use someone like her to engage men in conversation about their health. <laughs> we can get them naked, you know, we can uh, break some barriers. But you might be wondering, what exactly does this beautiful lady look like? She has the, the most beautiful skin, the most perfect curves, and her name is Tesla. <laughs> now, just for full disclosure, I am not paid by Tesla. The only communication I have with Tesla is with Elon Musk, 
and it's more of a one-way communication on Twitter. So if anyone knows him here, I just want one like or one Please, that's all I want, Elon. But what we did was we decided to take this car that was essentially a male magnet and to get guys to start talking about their health. And it was amazing what that car was able to do. Now you may be wondering, well, you know, what do guys really care about their car? So we actually did a survey of a thousand men. We asked two simple questions. What was the make and model of your first car? <laughs> And over 80% of men knew the make and model of their first car, but only about half could remember their last doctor's appointment. So that's when the idea came is, why don't we take this car and take it on the road? And last year, that's exactly what we did. In a matter of six weeks, this idea hit the road, and what we were able to do was truly was amazing. You can turn the sound off. Um, what we essentially did was we drove for 11,000 miles over 26 hours, nonstop engaging men. And how did we engage men? Number one, we engaged them on the road. So this car needs to be charged up every hour and a half or two hours. If my partner's driving really fast, almost every hour. But we stopped the car and every stop we had rallies just like this where we had sometimes 10 guys and sometimes hundreds of guys come in to talk about their health. But what brought them there was the car and the various technologies that we were using. While we were driving, we engaged them on social media, either through live webcasts with over 40 international men's health experts, or just on social media with us doing fun things and talking about various men's health topics. What was really cool was the statistics. We were able to raise, this, was all, this is all nonprofit, able to raise over um, $20,000 for research and scholarships, but we were able to engage over 350,000 people in a matter of one day. 350,000 people, that was the wow moment that we have something here that we're able to engage men. The second wow moment was for the past three months when we were planning this and driving, I didn't have one negative thought about what I was doing. I love waking up, I love going to see my patients, I love being a doctor. I fell back in love with medicine again. And it was through the car, it was through the technology, and it was through people like you that engaged us and started improving their health with our simple message. So what was that simple message? And this is a message I really want you to take to heart, because this is a message I want you to relate to yourself as a guy, and as a female to relate to someone that you love that's a man in your life. Treat your body like you would your car. It's just that simple. You buy a new car. <laughs> yes. It could be the most expensive car, it could be the cheapest car, who cares? But you buy it, treat it like you would your car. So if you, if you're, if you have a flat tire or if you have an engine light go on, what do you do? You go straight to the mechanic and you get it fixed because you need to use that car. You need that technology to get from day to day in all your activities. But at the same time, you know your car needs an oil change. You know your Tesla needs a battery pack change. You know that the, 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 the wiring and everything needs to be checked out so that you can get the full 100,000 miles out of that car. And you do it because you have to. Well, your body is the exact same way. If you have a headache that won't go away, if you have a rash on your skin that just feels a little unusual, if you have blood in your urine, then you should be doing the same thing. You should be going to your mechanic, which is your healthcare professional. And the same way, just like your car, there's guidelines. Your body has guidelines too. It doesn't matter how young you are, if you're 10, 15, 20, or if you're 100. Every single year, there's guideline-based surveillance checks that you need, whether it's a simple physical exam, a single handshake with your doctor, or a blood test. You need to treat your body like you would your car. Just like you get your car checked, your car tuned up, you need to do the exact same thing with your body. It's very, very simple. So taking that simple message, we went crazy this past year. So this past June, we decided to basically infuse our entire campaign on steroids. And this time, we drove 6,000 miles. We started from Central Florida in Claremont, Florida, which is right side of Orlando. Yes, Orlando, the home of Mickey Mouse. You, you really don't know the half of Orlando until you actually visit it. But there's some amazing things happening there. And that's where we launched off again. We went all the way up to New York, and then we started driving west. So 6,000 miles over 10 days with the exact same message. Treat your body like you would your car. Take care of it and get the full 100,000 miles out of it. What was really neat this year is we got a lot of publicity. We were on over 250 media stations. We hit over 440 million impressions on social media. On top of that, we got this letter a few months ago, a letter from the president basically saying that I guess he was watching and he acknowledged our drive for men's health, which is pretty cool. If you ever got a, a letter from a president or a prime minister, it's pretty cool. It shows that you are definitely making an impact. But that's all fine and dandy, but that's not what the whole goal was. The whole goal wasn't to get these high statistics. 
The whole goal was to reach out with people like Willow. Willow was a lady that we actually met on Periscope. Periscope, if you don't know, is a live broadcast platform um, that, that you run through Twitter. And what we essentially did was, I was just fooling around. Me, me and Sidja were just fooling around, talking about various men's health things. It was the middle of the night. And then she started interacting with us. The next day, she tells us that, oh, you know, I've been, I made my husband watch you. The third day, she says her husband is now making an appointment with her doctor. On the fourth day, Periscope is, Periscope is kind of stalkerish. She you know exactly where you are when you're talking. She's like, holy crap, you're like five minutes away from where I work. So she asked us to come visit her office. We went there, connected with her, connected with her staff. And this connection of men's health essentially went from just a simple, funny exchange on social media to now hundreds of women to where she lives. A very simple message, treat your body like you would your car. So great, we've helped all this men, but what about us personally as well? Well, I already mentioned that yes, I'm feeling much better mentally, but physically, if we're gonna be talking the talk, we need to walk the walk. And me and my partner have now made a commitment to our health as well. In total, we've lost about 15 pounds, this month, it may not look like I have a long way to go, but we're getting there and we're exercising and we're eating better and we're, we're controlling what we're putting in our bodies because again, our body is just like our cars and we want to treat it like we would. So how do you connect all of this stuff? Well, I have basically two missions and these are the two things I want you to take away today. Is you only have one body. You can always go rent a car, you can always go buy another car, you can always take the tube, but your car, you only get one opportunity. So take the best care of your body. And for me personally, I don't want to see my wife live the last five years of her life alone. I don't. And, and I, I want the opportunity to spend five more years with my kids and spoil the hell out of them, and while doing that, pissing my wife off. Well, that's what I want, and that's what five years will get me. That's a long time, that's a lot of memories that we can create, and it's very simple. All I have to do is control what I put in my mouth and control what I do with my body. <laughs> and obviously, there's certain things that we can't control, things can happen, but if you look at the statistic of five years, it took 100 years to get to this point. And are we gonna wait as guys 100 years to get healthy? We're not. We're not gonna wait 50 years, we're not gonna wait 30 years. We're gonna do this, our mission is to do this in the next four years. Our goal with the Drive for Men's Health is by 2020 to change that statistic. I wanna come back here in 2020 and show that we changed that statistic. So ladies, are you with us? Are you gonna help us? Yes. I don't think you're too excited. Ladies, <laughs> we really need you, trust me. Ladies, are you excited to drive with us for men's health? How about guys? Are you willing to make your commitment? Hell yeah. Make a commitment <laughs> to change and drive yourself for men's health. Guys. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I want to thank you because allowing me to connect with you on social media, you've helped me fall back in love with medicine again. Have a healthy day. Thank you. And Jay Swami Ryan. <laughs>